How many of you have written unit tests after the fact? How much fun is that? It's not fun. Why isn't it fun? Because you already know the code works. You tested it manually. So why are you writing those unit tests after the fact? Because somebody told me I had to. And so now you get into kind of passive aggressive mode. And even if you're really conscientious, you think, okay, I'll write this test. And yeah, I knew that would work because I tested it manually. Write this test. Yeah, that one worked too. And inevitably, you will come across the code that's hard to test. It's hard to test because you did not design it to be testable. You weren't thinking about that when you wrote the code. So now all of a sudden you've got a problem because in order to test this function, you're going to have to decouple something or break some dependency or restructure the code. And you look at your watch and you think, yeah, come on, I already know this code works. And you walk away. And you leave a hole in the test suite. Remember when I said you've got to trust that button? You just left a hole in the test suite. And you know if you are leaving a hole in the test suite, everybody else is leaving holes in the test suite too. And that leaves you with a test suite that executes just fine, but when it passes, your reaction is, huh, yeah, it passed. Doesn't mean anything. Because you know there's holes in it. A test suite that does not allow you to make a decision when it passes is a useless test suite. Oh, it might help you sometimes if you break something, but most of the time, you're gonna run that test suite and it's gonna pass and you will know that that doesn't mean anything because you know there are holes in the test suite. You cannot trust it. You should think of the test suite like a parachute. How many holes do you want in that parachute? When you write the tests first, following the three laws, something else happens. First of all, it's fun. Now, I don't mean it's like roaring fun, but you do get this, this lovely little experience of writing something that fails and then making it pass. And every time you make a test pass, there's a little shot of endorphins to the back of your brain. Yeah! Right? You watch a bunch of pair programmers, two, two guys working at, a, working at a terminal, and they're making test pass and writing tests that fail, make it pass. Every time they make a test pass, boom! Little, oh yeah, no, whoo! There's always some little gesture, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm a programmer. I got enough statement to work. So there's this element of fun to it that you don't get with, with unit testing after the fact. But more important than that, you cannot write the code that's hard to test. If you write the test first, you cannot write the code that's hard to test. Right? Because you're writing the test first, and that means you're designing the code to be testable. And there's another word for testable code. It's called decoupled, because that's how you make testable code. You make it decoupled. So the very act of writing the test first forces you to decouple things that you never thought to decouple before. Now, all of these things are good. And, you know, they're good benefits. We like those benefits. It's fun. You get good documentation out of it. It reduces your debug time. All these stupid three laws that you really don't want to do really have a profound effect but the most profound effect is that button and the fact that you trust it. And if you trust that button, all the effects that we talked about in the last hour come to you.